Welcome to the sixth presentation on presentation and writing tips. In this video, we will talk about three sections in a report. The method section, the results section, and the discussion section. And as before, this is part of the teaching material of ISP Group. You're free to use it as long as you say where it's from. And it's part of a CDIO course, a bachelor's course at Linköping University, and we are in the uh, second half of the uh, course. Yes, so in the previous video, I uh, tried to convey to you that you really want to say something. You want to, you want to sort of convey a message. This is argumentative text. It's not entertaining text. You really have a message and you want to say it, and then you're done, and then you shouldn't say anything more. And um, uh, I said that the title was important, and that the introduction uh, argued for two things. So the, the title is the main argument. The introduction argues for why this sort of thing that you have done is important, and it's the next logical step. So now, what about the next sections, the next chapters? What, what are they doing? They are all sub-arguments to the main thing that you say that diabetes is caused by a feedback in the, from the protein Ntor, for instance. Uh, so the method section uh, basically uh, gives more details of what kind of methods and data that you are making use of. So we still haven't really gotten to uh, supporting or, or, or saying um, why uh, the main statement is as it is. Uh, but if you want to check the details of how we did, how we got to the main statement, that this feedback is what explains type 2 diabetes, uh, this is the methods that we used. Uh, so it's a sort of all the details of how, um, what kind of existing methods that we made use of. And I will go through uh, on the next slide uh, more on this section, but, but, but it's basically, that's the point of the method section. If you want to uh, uh, do again what we did, these are the methods that we have used. And if you want to criticize how we did it, this is where you should, re should read, because this is sort of where the details are of the, of the various methods that we made use of. Um, and then we come to the results section, which in a way is the only section that really deals with the, the title of the report. Uh, it's the only sort of um, uh, chapter or section uh, that, that really uh, has to do with this feedback that shows the figures that argues for, uh, that, 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 is, that is the reason why we believe that this feedback is actually what is causing type 2 diabetes or whatever the statement is. Uh, so here, uh, this is sort of what you want to uh, read if you want to see what are the results that support the main statement. Uh, so this is, of course, in many ways the most important section, but it's only one of quite many, quite many chapters. Uh, and the other chapters, as you see, they sort of have different functions. And uh, the final uh, chapter, which is part of the core of a thesis, the core of a scientific paper, uh, is the discussion section. Uh, and in the discussion section, you basically uh, comment upon the results. You, you say things like, uh, look at this, or uh, while we argue for this, there are these and these weaknesses. So you sort of put it more in a nuanced picture. So this is in one sentence what these uh, uh, three chapters, method, result, and discussion, are about. So let's look a little bit more in detail on, uh, on these uh, three chapters. Um, so the method section. The method section, several of you have, or most of you have some preliminary version of the method section, and many of you have already gotten some feedback on it. Um, and uh, an 
initial thing to, to, uh, to know about the method section is that it's not all, always called a method section. Sometimes it's called a theory section, if you're doing a theoretical method paper. Sometimes it's called theory and methods. Sometimes it's called materials and methods. Sometimes it's called other things. But, uh, so there are different names, but they all have the same purpose. Um, and depending on how theoretical and experimental your, your, um, your paper is, uh, there are slight variations. But if you have some kind of theory, uh, this theory is usually presented in uh, using symbols and using equations and uh, using uh, functions and that kind of things. Uh, and uh, all of these symbols, all of these notations uh, and all of the concepts that go with them uh, has to be introduced and here they can be introduced in a technical fashion. Uh, um, some of them maybe had to be introduced in the introduction. But uh, in the introduction you only introduce so many technical details as is necessary to understand why what you have done is important and why is the next logical step. So you try to leave out as many technical details as you can to sort of make it as simple as possible so the introduction and the why part of the, of the statement uh, can, be, uh, can be understood easily by as many as possible. Uh, so this is sort of for, so the introduction is much more for a general audience whereas the method section is much more for the person who really want to scrutinize what you did, who really maybe want to do it again or want to do some modified version on it or build, build upon it or something. So this is much more technical details, much more sort of advanced things. Um, so it might be that some things appear both in the introduction and in the method section and in two, two versions on a sort of zoomed out, fairly conceptual easy to understand way, which is necessary for the logical flow leading to uh, the argument why this is important. And then you come back to them again in, in the method section, in a much more technical um, setting. So to get a little bit more specific, the method section usually includes uh, specifying ODEs, because usually you have built it on ODEs. Sometimes you use other frameworks, but then you need to specify those. Uh, and an ODE has many things that, you, uh, that, you ha that has names, parameters and states and uh, functions and output equations and so on. And all of these, uh, you call something. You call the states x maybe, for instance, and then you need to say that. We call the states x, and the x represent concentrations of uh, something. Uh, and we, y means the output, which is the measurement equation. Then you need to say that. Uh, so all the symbols that you use need to be introduced. And this is typically done in the method section. Uh, you might also uh, consider uh, to uh, um, uh, introduce the model here as well. And I will come back to that in the, in the questions in the end. So um, other things that you almost always want to say in the systems biology method section uh, or the functions that you have used. Though you have probably done some optimization of parameters, and then you need to say which function did you use to do the optimization. Uh, you probably used some cost function for that, and then how was that cost function structured? Was it just the sum of uh, squares of residuals? Did you add some punishment terms? Did you do it in some other way? So you need to specify those things so that a reader can do what you did. Uh, maybe you did some predictions, then you need to say about how you did uncertainty on the predictions. Maybe you did some statistical tests. And then you need to give the names of the methods and all the settings that you used. So if you do a statistical test, you have a cutoff, significance level, for instance, and you need to say what was that significance level. Um, you probably used some uh, software, MATLAB or uh, Mathematica or System Modeler or something like this. Then you need to specify those. And in almost all cases, you also have some experimental data. And then you need to give at least a summary, even though you didn't do the experiments. You need to explain what did the experiment come from? How were they done? Uh, and some of you also have some very specific methods that is only specific in your particular project. Then, and then these should go here as well. And you should give the names of them, and you should give the sort of general conceptual understanding of what the methods are doing. 
So you give, for instance, the name of the optimization function, and you say that it's a global optimization function, if it's a global optimization function. Maybe one or two sentences about it. So this is basically what makes up the method section. So now let's go on to the result section. Uh, so the result section, this is where you, this is the sort of uh, m most important section uh, or chapter because uh, this is um, this is where your arguments for your main statement comes in, and this is where you have used the methods to get, come up with this, uh, and here you basically say what has been done and you show the key plots that sort of support your main statements, uh, which is basically your title. So if you believe that this feedback is important for type 2 diabetes, then you need to show the plot that makes you believe that, so that you can convince the reader of that. And here, uh, they should of course come in a logical structure, uh, but this logical structure that makes you argue for why you think that it, this is the case. It's almost never the, log the, the, the same order of things that you yourself did them in. So you need to sort of find out what you want to say and then what is the logical order, order to argue for that. So you should not say, I did this and I did this and then I did this and then I did this, but you should so, so sort of have some kind of statement that you want to make and then you should find what are the arguments for that and which order should I find them in. And therefore, uh, you need to put quite some thought in how to structure the results section because this is where the main argumentation is of your main statements. Uh, and less is more. So uh, a common thing that you get from uh, early drafts of uh, results sections is that you have many, many, many plots. Uh, and the fewer plots, the better. And in the end, usually you can find one figure which in itself captures everything you want to say. So the sort of the, the main argument that you have can usually be captured in even one figure. Uh, so try to find that figure because that usually requires quite some thought process to make a really good figure that captures the essence of what you're claiming. And in any case, you should not have more than 10 figures. Then, then, uh, then you have sort of uh, done, uh, uh, then, then it's very hard to read. And usually if you have too many figures, you have not thought enough of the logical structure. What are the key arguments? Uh, and it's also, along with this line, it's also a sign of maturation of a project and of a writing process that the text and figures go down in numbers. So you have fewer pages and fewer figures, the more finished you are, because you realize that you don't need these things to say what you really want to say. So finally, discussion section. Um, so here, this usually starts with the summarizing of the main results in maybe one to four sentences, just to sort of wrap up what is it actually that we have said so far? Uh, what is the main claims that we want to do? And then you start to comment upon that. You start to find, uh, put a more nuanced picture of this. You, you, you highlight the things that are really strong and uh, you comment on the shortcomings. And when you comment on them, usually you try to come with counter arguments that while this is a shortcoming, it's not too serious because of this and this and this. Um, or maybe you say this is a shortcoming and, and it will be an important part for important challenge for future research to look into this. Um, and uh, you should really highlight things that uh, either are good or bad, but that really shouldn't be missed. Because when you're reading the plots uh, in the results section, usually you don't really know why you're reading them. Uh, you try to do it as good as you can, but still you are a little bit lost at this stage. So you, if there are things that really shouldn't be missed, you need to point them out in the discussion section. Um, and then you start to zoom out. Uh, you start to uh, remember the big picture. So you remember that this has to do with uh, understanding insulin signaling, which has to do with diabetes. Uh, and you sort of wrap up in a way that goes back all the way to the beginning, all the way to why this is important and what this might lead to in the future. So, so this is sort of where the discussion section ends. Uh, 
And uh, if you have a conclusion section or a summary section in the end, it sort of uh, has, it sort of contains um, the summarizing here and this nice ending in the, and this zooming out as well. So this is, um, this is uh, what I wanted to say about these three sections, methods, results, and discussion. And in the end, there are uh, four questions, which I now just read, and you can pause, and you can think, and you can choose. Uh, so the first question is, if you have a model that you have used, but you haven't really uh, developed it, uh, where would you put that? In the background, in the methods, in the results or in the discussion? Second question, if it is a model that you yourself has developed, uh, where would you put it then? The background, in the methods, in the results or in the discussion? And if you uh, have a number of plots uh, and you want to comment on the things that you see in the plots, where would you put that? The background, methods, results, or discussion? And the final question. If, it's, uh, if you have developed, as part of your project, a new method, where would you put that? Would you put that in the background, methods, results, or discussion? 